right now on Five on Your Side at 10. Tonight, the budget for St. Louis Public Schools is not adding up. The deficit debate on balancing the books without upsetting the apple cart. Tracking rain and storms at times Thursday. Why the morning rain chances will set the stage for the afternoon or evening thunderstorms. Our top story. Cut that way, cut that way. Disturbing new body cam footage capturing the moment that put Officer Travis Brown in a fight for his life. New tonight, we're hearing from the family of Officer Brown as the Ferguson officer remains in a coma. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Kelly Jackson. We're also hearing from Backstoppers, which provided a huge donation to support the officer's road to recovery. Five on your side's Brent Solomon walks us through the newly released video. Good evening, guys. Officer Brown fell and hit his head after police say a protester forcefully shoved him. Five days later, the officer is still fighting for his life. And now we're getting a look at his body camera footage that sheds more light on the terrifying attack. A warning, the video is disturbing. Friday night, Ferguson police were responding outside of their own department after protesters broke off part of the police station's fence. Did they already take the gate? I saw somebody go across the street with the gate, so where they... Officers calmly approached the group when police say this man, Elijah Gant, assaulted Officer Travis Brown. Excuse me. You under arrest, bro? Cut that way. Cut that way. Officer down. Officer down. You can hear Brown's fellow officers compassionately refer to him as TJ before they eventually pick him up and take him into a police car. TJ, oh, we got you, TJ. TJ, TJ. TJ. who's the one hell? Come on, TJ. Oh, come on. TJ, you're good, bud. You're good. You could just see they're wanting to do something. Wednesday, we shared the newly released video with Chief Ron Battelle, the executive director of Backstoppers. The group supports first responders who are hurt in the line of duty. We were over there two nights ago, gave the family a $10,000 check. The former police chief recalls the family's grief. Concern, you know, not knowing what the future brings. Brown's family said, while it is impossible to personally thank everyone who has contributed, we want to acknowledge the entire first responder community who have played a vital role in assisting Travis. Tuesday, we heard from Ferguson Police Chief Troy Doyle. I mean, if you look at the video, the officer is standing there waiting to try to catch this guy. It wasn't a collision. He's standing there. And this guy tackled my guy like he was a football player. Battelle told me he shared a message with the chief. I told him, stand your ground. Recently you told him that? I told him, stand your ground. I mean, we, we got to stand up for these police officers and first responders. You know, when they start laying out injuries on them like this, we stay on our ground. Brown's family went on to say that Travis is more than a police officer. He is a devoted father, son, and a man of strong faith. They're asking people to donate to the Ferguson Police Department and the Support for Officer Travis Brown GoFundMe. You can find that on the As Seen on TV section of KSDK.com. And a sixth person is now charged for his action in Friday's Ferguson protest. Police say Torin Taylor grabbed another officer's weapon while arresting the man who tackled Officer Travis Brown. They also say Taylor headbutted a wall several times and created two large holes while in an interview room. Four of the original five people arrested have posted bail. Right now, we're learning more about a deadly crash that has shut down a major artery into downtown St. Louis. This is a live look at eastbound I-44 near Broadway, which just reopened minutes ago. That accident held traffic up for nearly three hours. St. Louis police say a semi-truck hit a man while the man was changing a tire. The semi-truck driver pulled over a couple of miles away. Police are still investigating the accident. St. Louis can expect a weather impact alert for tomorrow. The city got a taste of the rain earlier, but much more is on the way. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell is here to show us what we can expect for the morning commute, Scott. You know, there are three distinct opportunities for rain around St. Louis tomorrow. The first wave will come from what we're seeing right now to our north and west, just coming into northwest Missouri, across northeastern portions of Kansas. This is a line of strong to severe thunderstorms. It continues to evolve 
as it heads in our general direction through the overnight hours, it will weaken, but that'll be in here in time for the morning rush hour. Right now, things are relatively quiet. A couple of little sprinkles and light showers to the north of St. Louis over the farm fields. Going through the overnight hours, we're generally quiet until after 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. That's when some of these showers and thunderstorms will start rolling our way. But again, they're weakening as they approach St. Louis. We'll likely have some downpours for some of us during the early morning rush hour, but in the 6 to 10 a.m. time frame, not expecting severe weather there. What this complex of storms does, though, it lays down a boundary to the south of St. Louis that may instigate more storms in that four to eight time frame. And then another cluster of thunderstorms will be rolling our way tomorrow night, most likely after 10 o'clock until about three o'clock Friday morning. That is probably the biggest chance for seeing some of the stronger storms with gusty winds, maybe some hail, even an isolated tornado. At this point, we want you to stay weather aware tomorrow. Make sure those devices are charged and ready to go with your notifications on. All right, Scott. Tonight, we are delving more into the St. Louis Public Schools budget as more information was released last night at the final board meeting before school starts. There were lots of concerns raised about the current surplus and projected deficit. Five in your size, Laura Barcheski also checked in with the teachers union about how they're feeling about all of this, Laura. Kelly, the American Federation of Teachers says they're feeling good after that meeting last night and the data presented on on the budget is reassuring even with the possibilities of challenges. On the surface, the St. Louis Public Schools budget situation has raised some concerns. The district is expected to wrap up fiscal year 2024 with a $17 million surplus and they're projected to run about a $34 million deficit next year. We're Certainly very early in the year, we've had very little revenues received. We spent very little money because we're just so early in the year. Chief Financial Officer Angie Banks says one of the biggest reasons for the deficit is the district's effort to have competitive salaries. They're spending $32 million to make that happen. Byron Clemens with the American Federation of Teachers says significant raises are key for recruitment and retention. We've worked for years and been underpaid. It's about time to treat us as the professionals we are. Banks says they have a plan deficit deficit for this year and next year. After that, they'll likely have to look at ways to balance the budget, which could mean different things like layoffs and downsizing. But Clemens says they're not worried right now and always want to be part of the solution. Once upon a time, there was talk of way layoffs, and that's how we came up with a strategy to freeze our salaries and have furloughs. But what's not part of those numbers is the fund balance, also known as the rainy day fund. Banks refer to it as the money in the bank, which they'll use to cover the deficit. That $231.7 million beginning balance is reduced by that 34 point $3 million deficit to an ending fund balance of that 197.4. Student registration is up, but they'll still need more families in the district. Banks says that would help the budget, but there are some other things that can also make a difference. I think that the district probably needs to be on a regular rhythm of issuing bonds so that we can have more consistency in the things that we want to achieve. Banks said they're also looking at reducing the number of contractors they have in the district and bringing those jobs in house. Putting live downtown, Laura Barcheski, five on your side. With just five days until the first day of class, parents in St. Louis City are still concerned about how their kids will get to school. More than a thousand high school students will have to use public transportation starting on Monday. Metro Transit allowing parents a free one day pass this week to give families the opportunity for a test run. Parents can get those one day passes by calling 314-982-1406. Metro also released a how to ride video and flyer for students and parents. We have all this information in the As Seen on TV section at KSDK.com. Tonight, an innocent woman is recovering after getting caught in a gun battle in North St. Louis. Witnesses told police it happened in broad daylight Tuesday afternoon near the intersection of Lexington and Paris in the Greaterville neighborhood. New tonight, Robert Townsend is live outside police headquarters downtown tracking the search for suspects. Robert. Kelly, police tell us they arrested two young guys in connection with that shootout. Tonight, they're still looking for others. Let me tell you, neighbors are just so glad that innocent drivers survived. This afternoon, this north side neighborhood looked ordinary and peaceful, but 
The day before, neighbors say loud, rapid gunfire ripped across the air. I'm talking to my son, and as I'm talking to my son, I hear pow, 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 My other son come running in. This startled mom asked us to conceal her identity. She was on her phone when she immediately told her children to drop to the floor and stay inside their home as bullets flew. It was. It was a real live war zone. Police say a 47-year-old woman drove down Lexington Avenue, got caught in the crossfire, and was shot. Neighbors say someone in a car rode down the street and repeatedly fired at two young men standing on a sidewalk. Investigators say the pair returned fire. Neighbors say bullets also hit this apartment building and several parked cars. It was enough shots for you to fear for your life. It's kids out here playing. You get what I'm saying? It could have been one of them. That's what frustrates me. The neighbor says her security camera caught this photo of the woman's car on video when it passed her home. We're told the victim suffered gunshot wounds on her left side. Paramedics rushed her to a hospital. Gun laws really need to be changed. Adrian Stacker is with the nonprofit helping our neighbors with ongoing resources and support. They want to help the innocent driver. We're going to reach out to the family and see if there's anything else that we can assist them with. Because she got hit with a, a military style gun. That's why she's lucky to be alive. Now, the woman is expected to be okay. We're live downtown, Robert Townsend, five on your side. New tonight, police arrested two people involved in a quadruple shooting in South City. Katrina Kelly and Kyle Peaton face first degree murder charges after killing one person and injuring three others last month. Police say Kelly, Peaton, and other suspects approached a car with three people in it and started shooting. One person in the car later died from their injuries. A fourth person was shot and injured while walking nearby. Tonight, we have new video of police arresting rapper Nelly. You can see officers taking Nelly out of Hollywood Casino in handcuffs and putting him in, into a police car. Maryland Heights Police only released this dash cam video. They say there's no body cam video because the officer's batteries died. Police arrested Nelly last week on a failure to appeal warrant connected to a traffic charge. A young football player's life cut short. He actually grabbed my face and said, let me go. A family turning their grief into action, protecting the next generation of athletes. These are the storms right now rolling into far northwest Missouri. By daybreak, they're on our doorstep and not as intense. It's the storms later Thursday that have us in a weather impact alert. We're tracking in seven minutes. Alton's Golden Gordon Moore Park is almost back up and running. The city announced the park will reopen Friday after a giant sinkhole closed it for more than a month. However, parts of the park will still be closed, such as the soccer fields and nearby ballpark. The 30 foot hole was caused by mine subsidence from a mine under the park. The start of the new school year brings the start of the fall sports season. And while high school sports provide benefits for student athletes, they can also sometimes be dangerous. Tonight, a Baldwin family is using their tragedy in hopes of saving lives. In an exclusive interview, they sat down with Annie Crawl to share their story. John Gall Jr. played on these Manchester fields behind St. Joseph Parish. He always um, uh, was quick with it, but he was kind as well. Little John to his dad, John Gall Sr., his son was happiest playing football and soccer. The 2010 and 2011 team uh, those were uh, both teams that John uh, in his junior and senior year had played in the final four. But then his family saw a change. John um, was really good at keeping a lot of this to himself. And uh, so the serious signs uh, didn't really come through until maybe about a year before he died. It happened March 24th, 2017. John's parents busted down the bathroom door to see he had taken his own life. He was uh, still conscious and he actually grabbed my face and said, let me go. John was 24. After donating his brain to research, they found it had the first stage of CTE caused by repeated head trauma. He had two concussions in his junior year, 
one from soccer, one from football. Yet significant strides have been made to concussion protocol, something John's high school friend Kevin Wayner has top of mind as assistant athletic director at SLU High. What I'm seeing is more caution from the, the boys. Um, they're more aware um, for the most part and they're more cautious than they were before, I think because they're seeing some of these stories out there of some of these NFL guys or college guys that, you know, years down the road are kind of dealing with these symptoms. The same brain safety, the St. Louis slam practices. This professional women's tackle football team won five national championships, their latest on July 27th. The quarterback is Jamie Gall, John Jr.'s cousin. Because of his death, their family had hesitations. There was always an understanding of like, okay, if you get one concussion, that might need to be the end of it. You know, if you would get two, I, I don't think she would ever, let, I don't think she would let me play, you know, even though I'm grown, you know, your mom still kind of gets to tell you what to do, so. Now hoping John's legacy will help parents look for CTE signs in their kids. And I, when I was given his eulogy, I looked out there and I realized we didn't do such a bad job. The 21-14 Concussion Awareness Foundation was started in John's honor to share suicide prevention resources. Annie Crawl, five on your side. There are not specific symptoms linked to CTE, but possible changes include memory loss, new impulsive behaviors, and depression. For a list of current concussion protocols, visit KSDK.com. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell rejoins us now with that weather impact forecast and a weather impact alert day tomorrow. Tomorrow, we'll start with some rain in St. Louis for the early morning rush hour. That shouldn't be on the severe side, but there is the potential for some stronger thunderstorms later tomorrow, especially for St. Louis heading into tomorrow night. This is what's going on tonight. We still have this weather system, hot air out to the west, trying to come back in. We've seen showers and thunderstorms develop over the last couple of days around the fringes of that hot air. Again tonight, quite the impressive line of storms developing, stretching from near Des Moines out to the north and west of Kansas City. This is what will be heading our way as it comes in towards daybreak tomorrow. Some rumbles of thunder and some downpours. All that we have at the moment is a few sprinkles northeast of St. Louis. The entire area for Thursday into Thursday night is covered by a level two out of five risk for severe thunderstorms. The greatest threat by far would be wind, damaging gusty winds. And the timing on the stronger storms, there's two opportunities for that. One south of St. Louis early to mid, let's say mid afternoon into the early evening and then during the overnight hours for the metro area. Let's look at the timeline here. Future cast taking us into tomorrow morning. This is your rush hour time frame with the decaying or dying cluster of showers and thunderstorms rolling in from the west. So that's what's out there now in northwest Missouri. It'll die off as we head through tomorrow morning. We should be relatively quiet through the midday hours, but that cluster puts down a boundary south of St. Louis. So along this boundary, we'll likely see some showers and thunderstorms developing during the afternoon. Some of those could be strong, but they're mainly south of St. Louis. Then after 10 o'clock tomorrow night, a cluster of thunderstorms rolls through until about 3 3 a.m. That's when our potential seems to be the highest for severe weather. Since there's a potential for rain during that 6 to 10 a.m. time frame impacting your morning rush hour, plus the potential for some stronger storms to the south of St. Louis in that 4 to 8 time frame, and then the 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. time frame, that's why we have the weather impact alert. So keep those phones charged up, ready to go, and those notifications on. Just stay weather aware for tomorrow. 77 degrees right now. 80 was our high. We're holding tonight in the upper 60s and lower 70s. The showers and storms arrive before daybreak. Our timeline for tomorrow for the most intense weather or most impactful weather is during the morning rush hour with rain. And then late in the afternoon into tomorrow night, we'll continue with that weather impact alert for the potential of some stronger storms. Low 90s for highs tomorrow, around 90 on Friday. Here's the good news. Rolling into the weekend, we are rolling in some drier air. Humidity drops off a little bit. Temperatures back off to about average, maybe a degree below in the 80s. And we have a lot of sunshine. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. All right, get through tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, Scott, thank you. Sports is next with Frank. Mike, Bernie Nicholas has a thought on what the Cardinals should do. We have a woman who will be racing in the Bomberito 500 and we look at a positively dominating high school football team.
This Five on Your Side Sports Report is sponsored by Tele Tire and Auto Centers, driving your way since 1942. The Cardinals are nowhere close to being mathematically eliminated. But I think when we look back on this season, this series right here going 0 for Cincinnati was the backbreaker. The Reds just outscored the Cardinals 19 to 4 in the three games. And now the schedule gets brutal. These Reds are not the big red machine. They're a sub 500 team like the Cardinals are now. But today they pummeled Kyle Gibson. Four home runs in five innings. And just like that, the Reds led it six to nothing. Five homers tonight, 10 for the series. 10 for the series. How bad was it? Well, the offensive highlight of the night was Jordan Walker's infield hit. Cardinals lose 9-2. They're 4-9 in August. Jordan Walker's return is the latest move in question. Their top prospect is back, but only to platoon against lefties. The moves made to bolster the pitching staff have helped, but now this is a team that can't score runs. They're treading water now, but what will the record look like after this brutal 22-game stretch coming up? The always opinionated Bernie Miklas offered me this thought. It's an understatement to call it fatigue. Fans have had it. This is chronic fatigue. It's extreme fatigue. It is severe fatigue. It is the kind of fatigue that can't be healed. And if you're Bill DeWitt and you got all these empty seats and you say, well, what, what's going to get the people that gave up those seats? Say, I'm not going to buy any more tickets. I'm not buying seats. What could you do to get them back? There's only one answer. It isn't like, well, go pursue that pitcher. Oh, go. No. You got to start over with your front office. This woman behind me will be racing in the Bomberito 500 on Saturday. 44 year old Catherine Legg, who is one of nine women in the last 45 years to race in the Indy 500. She's from England and will be behind the wheel of Dale Coyne's number 51 Honda entry. Worldwide Technology Raceway will really be rocking this weekend. Everything from wrestling to concerts, but mostly racing. And the Indy cars will return from the Olympic break by competing on that very challenging 1.25 mile oval. And one of the interesting drivers is the man in the green car, Roman Groshan. We talked earlier today and I asked him about the sensation of driving 200 miles an hour. It's, it's what I love doing, you know, I think it's it's trying to take that race car that's weighed, I don't know, 1,800 pounds and, and 700 horsepower or so and, and make it like you control everything that it's doing. And I think that's, a, that's the most beautiful state you can get to with a race car is, is using it as it was natural for you. How about this? NASCAR ruled Austin Dillon's win at Richmond won't count toward eligibility for the Cup Series playoff. And that's because he did this. He was playing Demolition Derby, sending Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano to the wall in rapid succession to clear his path to victory. Dillon does get credit for the win, though. It won't be long until Friday nights are dominated by high school football. Cardinal Ritter will be one of the top teams in the state once again. The back-to-back -back state champs will be led by Carson Boyd at quarterback this year. He's committed to play for Illinois next season, but wants his senior year to go out with a bang. But Coach Spain kind of told me uh, it's, it's my show this year, and I'm looking to put up bigger numbers than I have in the past, so for sure. And kind of said that the quarterback position, they only take one quarterback. You know, uh, the Power Five uh, uh, schools only take one QB, so... Um, we kind of sat down and said whatever school is recruiting us the hardest is the school that we're going to pull the trigger on. In Illinois, I went up there a couple times, uh, sp uh, junior day, game day visits. It, it was just the family vibe I got from there. And as we mentioned earlier, this school, this smallish Catholic school in North St. Louis is just a dominating power. Yeah, they, they are. Win state titles and they get all these kids Division One scholarships. Really That's cool. Terrific. Frank, thanks. Olympian Alex Shackle shared her first day of school with us. See what she's packed next to her books. St. Louis born Olympian Alex Shackle showed up to her first day of school in style. The 17 year old senior brought her gold and silver medal to Carmel High School located near Indianapolis. Earlier this month in Paris, Shackle won gold in the women's 100 meter medley relay and silver in the 200 meter freestyle relay. It is a prize that came as a surprise for many golfers. <laughs> Check out this little fella. A groundhog got stuck 
and a claw machine in Pennsylvania. A game warden rescued it and released it back into the wild. The mini golf course that owns the machine named the little guy Colonel Custard. St. Louis City SC fans are getting a chance to get on the pitch. Tickets for yoga sessions at City Park go on sale tomorrow at 10 a.m. You can choose between two one-hour sessions on September 15th. Tickets cost $45. Per person. And we're in a weather impact alert for tomorrow. We are, especially for later in the day into tomorrow evening. Probably about this time tomorrow night, we'll be tracking some of the strongest storms that we'll see into the overnight hours. But tomorrow morning, we'll start the day with some rain. Temperatures will go back into the low 90s between rounds of showers and thunderstorms. And it's not a complete washout tomorrow. You know, dry time going into the first part of the afternoon before those rain chances ramp back up. And there you have it. Five on your side at 10. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. And you can wake up early for today in St. Louis at 4 a.m. Have a great tomorrow.